Hi, I'm Henry Platten. I'm the CEO and founder of eCadets and GoBubble. And we are all about making the internet a safer, kinder and healthier place for children. I'm a former police sergeant and I'm a father of two. I have a son and a daughter who are both in early school and I care greatly about making the internet a better place for children. Through these videos, I'm going to be sharing with you as a fellow parent advice and top tips which I've built up over the many years working within the world of online safety and protecting and helping children all the way around the world. In today's quick session for you as parents, what I would like to talk to you about is social media. Social media is a massive part of people's everyday lives, and that includes children. Research shows that despite there being minimum ages to access social media, for some platforms that's 13, for others it's 16, and can even be 18 years of age as the minimum age to come in and use it. All of that to one side, children use social media. They use social media before they're old enough to, and that can put them in harm's way in terms of the content which they can see, which can be upsetting and distressing, both to them as children and to us as parents as well. And also contact. They can come into contact with strangers and, worse still, adults pretending to be children. So let's just have a look at those three areas first of all. Age, contact and content. When it comes to age, as I mentioned, there is a minimum age attached to all social media platforms. What's really important for us as parents is to understand why children want to use social media. What is it in particular which is the appeal for them for the platform? From my experience, what I find and what all of the schools and children that we work with tell us is that social media in itself is not the appeal. The appeal is staying in contact with their friends. They want to be able to communicate with them, to collaborate and to have fun digitally. They want to build their own online safe playground, their own world where they get to connect with their friends digitally as well as in real life. And that's a really important thing to remember. So it's not so much the platform, it's more how they want to use it. When we're armed with that as parents, we can actually shift the debate and we can shift the conversation. And one of the things which I always advise is that it's best to sit down with your son or daughter and ask them why they want to use social media. And invariably you will hear them say, because my friends use it or that's where my friends are. Now, the great news for parents is that you don't just have to rely on the mainstream social media sites that exist. There are now kid centered social media platforms that exist. GoBubble, as I mentioned from the outset, is one of these, and it's the platform that we've built. Within GoBubble, it cares very much about being safer, healthier, and kinder. For example, it switches off at night, we check the content before it appears, therefore reducing drastically the risk of anything that children may see that would could scare or upset them. We also reward kindness. We reward the likes that children give, not the likes they get. So the great news for you as parents is that there are options out there which can construct the same feel and appeal as social media for children, but in a different way. And with GoBubble, what we always say is that it's better than social media because it doesn't have those other historic problems. Some of the other important things to think about when it comes to age are the safety measures that are in place with the platform, whichever one it is, that you choose to use. Always make sure that you read the terms and conditions. Have a look at what safety measures they put in place to protect your child that you are happy with. And have that conversation together with your son or daughter. Involve them in that. Involve them in looking at the platform with you and deciding which one is best for you and for them. Next area that I want to talk about is content. So one of the other issues that can come through with social media for children is that they can see stuff which isn't appropriate for them. They can see news content, posts which are designed for grown-ups, but not for children. Now, it's really important that when a child does see any content online that scares or upsets them, 
that they know they can come and talk to you about it. There are things that you can do as well at home when looking at filtering and monitoring software for use in your own home. What I would always recommend is whatever platform you're looking at using with your child, and as I mentioned, the vast majority of children under age use social media, so it's something which you will have to consider. Have a look at the platform, and what does the platform itself do in terms of restricting the content that children can see? Not just by talking about a minimum age, but actually proactively checking the content. You will find it's very rare for platforms to do this. They push the balance back to you as a parent or back to the child. So it's really important to have a look and understand how those checks are done in terms of the content that's in place. For example, again, within GoBubble, we actually check the content before it goes live for you, therefore reducing that risk. The other things as well is know how to report a problem. So if there is an issue that comes up, be confident that you as a parent or that your son or daughter know how to report that problem through to the platform. The final area to have a look at is contact. Research shows that 24% of children have been approached by an unknown stranger online. That means almost a quarter of all children have had contact from a stranger. Social media is all about contacts. Therefore, again, it underlines the same point that we said at the outset, that the age is really important. What's also important, as well as the minimum age, is also how does the platform check that the person is a real person? That the person is doing and operating in a way which fits in with the terms and conditions of the platform, but also that fits in with terms and conditions that you are happy with as a parent to keep your own child safe. So it's really important to see what measures they put in place. Is it simply a tick box to say how old you are, in which case it's, it's open to the opportunity to lie about how old you are and who you are, or are there more stringent checks that they do? Again, within GoBubble, we actually use biometric age verification to prove that a user is a real person and also is of the age that we allow in. And therefore, you know that it's a safer environment. Some top tips that I would suggest for you as parents. So first and foremost, as I mentioned, pick a platform with your son and daughter, discuss it with them, and make sure that the two of you are happy in how that operates, how to report problems through there, and also what it's doing to keep your child safe. Second thing, always ensure that they're going to be connecting with their real friends, with verified people who you know. So a good way to do this is to chat with the other parents who you're friends with and who your son or daughter is friends with their children. Talk about some platforms together with the other parents and then decide on one which you're happy for everyone to use and then enable the kids to connect safely through in that way. It just means that you're helping to build up and maintain the friend connection that they have in there while still giving them the freedom to talk with their friends who you know are real people. Always check the age of the platform, and I can't stress that highly enough. There's lots of ways to do it. You can check on the website. If you're downloading the app in the App Store or in the Android Google Play Store, it will show the age next to the app. So always check the age. If your child is not of that age and is younger, I would strongly recommend that they do not use that platform because the measures that the developers have put in place will not be designed for your son or daughter and therefore could cause them risk or potential risk. Final thing is check when the last security update came out for the platform. Now this is really important because software changes daily, weekly. It's really important that the platforms that your children are using have the most up-to-date versions. If something hasn't been updated in the last three to four months, I'd be asking why. There have to be a really good reason why developers aren't updating their platforms, certainly once every three months. And that's to keep on top of security risks and harms and to ensure that it has the highest level of security to protect your son or daughter. Also some personal advice. So as a parent, you may use social media yourself. 
if you do, some advice that I would give to you to think about for your own use of social media. Whenever setting up a social media account, you'll be asked to put an email account in to verify your account. I would strongly recommend that the email address that you use to verify a social media account is not the same email that you use to run the rest of your life. In other words, the contact email for your bank, the one that you may use for online shopping, uh, or the one that the school may use to be able to reach out and contact you on. Set up a brand new email account that is just for running your social media accounts. Reason being is that people tend to share the same password in email as they do in social media. If someone is able to break into your social media account, they can see the contact email that you've attached to it. If you share the same password with your social media account as you do with your main email account, it now means that that person can access your main emails where you run the rest of your life. So the easiest way to have two separate emails, have one that's just for social media and for setting up the accounts, have the other one that's for the rest of your life. And please use a different password on both of those email accounts. Second thing, as I mentioned, check the updates on the apps, as we said, for the children. It's still very important for you as grown-ups to do exactly the same thing. Again, apps should always be updated on a regular basis. If there is an update which the platform is asking you to put in, or your mobile phone provider is asking you to put an update to up ensure the system preferences and the system operating system is up to date, please do the update. They're really important. It's designed to improve the efficiency of the, of the device, but also it's designed to give you the highest level of security. So please always put the updates in place for the app or for your device. Check the security settings regularly. With social platforms, if ever there's a problem in terms of a hack or something that's come through which has jeopardized the safety and security of the platform, naturally, their developers are going to try and improve the security and build in protection against it happening again. There could be a risk with this new software that they put out that it actually could knock your software settings back down. So if you set your security really high, if there is an update, there is a risk it could knock your security settings back down to the lower level. So always check your security settings and make sure they're set to a level that you are happy with. The final three is very much about what to avoid. So it's about avoiding spam, it's about avoiding links that are sent through social media, and also avoiding quizzes and general tests that come through. What I mean by that is you will see a lot of spam messages that come out saying that uh, here's a, a message that's been written and all that you ask is that two of your friends share the same message. It's exactly the same as chain letters that were sent when we were all children in school and it's one of the things that can clog up systems and is a cause of potential spam. Therefore, please do not send on these messages or share them in the way which they're asking you to. Likewise, links and shopping links that can appear in social media. There have been cases where these links and shopping links have been set up to enable credit card fraud. Please, if you are doing any online shopping, only ever use a creditable online trader, ideally one with an HTTPS URL address, so the address on the top of the website would start HTTPS, and only use a system of payment that you are happy with. For example, credit card, PayPal, whatever the provider may be. It's really important to always think twice about using shopping links that may appear in non-shopping websites. For example, social media. Because the same level of checks may not be carried out on that trader and therefore there is a potential risk. With all of this, there will be people who operate truthfully and honestly, and it will not be a problem. We're talking about the percentage chance where there'll be some people that use it for means that could be illegal. The final thing are quizzes. So we often see lots of quizzes that appear in social media where it's asking you uh, what your first record was that you bought, what the first car was that you drove, uh, your earliest memory, your first pet's name, uh, lots of things like this. These quizzes 
can be innocent, but also these quizzes, these quizzes can be used by people to farm information from you. And this information can help people to potentially identify the passwords that you use. Therefore, I would strongly recommend again, not engaging in quizzes of this nature. They may be designed for short-term entertainment, but there is a risk with the information that you could end up sharing without necessarily being aware of that. Thank you very much for your time and attention. This is the first in the series of the parent tutorials that we'll be providing for you. Uh, any advice, any hints or tips or questions uh, that I haven't covered that you would like me to, please let me know. Uh, within gobubble.school, we will also be starting a special area for parents whereby parents can come in and conduct in live Q and A's with myself on future topics. We'll be announcing those in future videos coming up very soon. Thank you very much indeed. And please stay safe, stay happy, stay well.